He's the manager of uh, the Cincinnati Reds. He's Dusty Baker joining us on the program. Dusty, uh, did you get to see my first pitch at Wrigley? Yeah, it was pretty good. The, the, the second one was better. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, it was a setup pitch. You know, I wanted to go huh. low and away. Yeah, to make everybody think you're wild, huh? Yeah, and then come back. But I don't know. Did you guys have the gun on me there? Anybody from the Reds uh, scouting me? No, but I told you not. Don't bounce it, and you bounce it anyway. I know. Man. I know. Well, you shouldn't have told me that. You got in my head there. <laughs> oh, okay. So I'll put that thought in there. It was my fault. I'll take the blame. No problem. Uh, I wanted to ask you a couple of things. First of all, the uh, the baseball rules, the uh, unwritten rules with what happened with the Mets. Now, let's, you know, if you don't want to comment on them, take it out of that. But just guy gets hit, and then you know that David Wright's going up there, and you say, I'm going to take him out of the game. What, what do you think is etiquette-wise uh, that, that works for baseball, for that player, and for the manager, for the team? Well, number one thing, Dan, I don't think guys know when they're trying to hit them or not anymore. Anything close is, uh, is, is deemed intentional. And you're throwing a projectile 90-plus miles an hour, and the, and the margin, especially if it's inside between getting hit and being a strike, is about six inches. Uh, and, you know, I think that has to be established first. Uh, guys are going to get hit. Now, number two, I – admire David Wright for not wanting to come out of the game because, like, I remember when I was playing, you know, Reggie Smith or myself or Garb or Penguin would, you know, hit a home run and they wouldn't hit us. They'd hit always Bill Russell and uh, and uh, Daryl Thomas. So, you know, uh, you know, Terry can do what he wants to do. I can understand I want to get his best player hurt. But on the other hand, David Right, I, I respect him for not wanting to come out of the game and say, hey, if they're going to drill somebody, you might as well drill me. You know what I mean? But if you drilled Braun, then you, you can't say, well, we're going to hit him because somebody just homered, and uh, but I'm going to take my guy out before you hit, hit him. It's like well, an old school but not in new school there for Terry right. Collins. Well, but see, the thing about it is, like I'm telling you, you have to establish, I mean, it looked bad because it was after homer. You have to yep. establish, did he hit Braun on purpose or not? Yeah. I mean, that's the, I mean, that's the whole thing. You know, it just looks bad that it followed a home run. And, uh, you know, nobody knows that but, the you know, the pitcher that threw it. I would still so, – but I'm amazed, though, that anything that's close, as you said, that, you know, you, you, these pitchers, you know, that they're, or the hitters, they feel like the inside part of the plate is theirs. And the pitchers, you know, if they throw there, then it must be they're throwing at, at the hitter. It's got to well, be Well, I disagree with that. I disagree because, Dan, I think the hitters now think the whole place is <laughs> It's <laughs> the truth. <laughs> and we came with the inside side part of the plate was mine, and the outside part of the plate was theirs. But when I see guys diving toward the outside part of the plate, uh, or, or with the unorthodox uh, stances, I mean, they're telling me that they're not afraid of the ball being pitched inside, and, and guys don't know how to get out of the way anymore. See, but, you know, before we expected, you have to watch a pitcher's release point. And, and if you watch his release point, Dan, it's going to be hard to really hit you without you getting out of the way. You know what I'm saying? But if you're going and you're locked into an area, the guys now turn out. That's why you see guys getting hit in the face. And we were taught that you turn in. If yep. you get hit anywhere, you get hit in the back. Uh, you know, not in the not in the front. How many guys have you seen now get hit in the back elbow because they're turned into the ball, and, it, and the ball hits them in the back elbow? I, I've never seen that before. You know what I mean? If anything, you get hit in the front elbow. Well, you so, had Cole Hamels hitting Bryce Harper. Well, what? hey, that's between them. That's between them, Dan. I ain't in that one. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, Bryce uh, uh, and Cole. I don't know what they had going. You don't, you don't know if they had something going since spring training. I mean, nobody really knows. But uh, it wasn't a smart thing to admit that he was trying to hit him. But I guess he's one of the most honest guys I've ever met because it cost him a lot of money. <laughs> that, you know, to say, <laughs> but did you, know, you to be that honest? Did you have a welcome to the big league moment? Did anybody did 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 a pitcher do that to you? Well, not really. Um, you know, but I did. I, I remember um, we were in St. Pete when I was with the Braves. I was a little rookie. I was going to go into my rookie year. And uh, the, the the Mets worked out, I mean, uh, uh, trained with the Cardinals in the same stadium. And so uh, they had a game that night. We we rolled in on the bus with a, uh, a afternoon game the next day. And Hank said, you want to go to the game with me? I said, yeah. So I went to the game with Hank. And then afterwards, he, he says, uh, you know, Bob Gibson was pitching. And <laughs> Bob Gibson hit John Milner right in the back with the first pitch. And so after the game, I went out to dinner with Hank and Bob Gibson, and Hank asked him, he said, he called him Hoot. He says, Hoot, why'd you hit that young kid? And he said, because I heard he could hit, and I wanted to get him in line. <laughs> and so John had hit like 311 that year or something like that in AAA, and I had hit like three and a quarter, 
And so I was like, dang, man, I out hit John. I hope he didn't hear I could hit too. You know what I'm so, you know, he kind of got me in line by hitting John, my buddy. And, uh, you know, that's the thing that I remember most. I mean, you know, most of the time they didn't just drill guys unless you were either clowning, showboating, you know, going around the bases. Uh, or, you know, uh, first thing they did, they find out if you can hit a fastball. Then they find out if you can hit a slider. Then they find out if you can hit a changeup. Then a curveball. If you hit all those, then they found out. Then they try to find out if they could intimidate you and see how you hit on your back. And there, and that's a major difference between the game now and the game before. Is that you know there wasn't any warnings. I mean, if they wanted to knock you down, Willie May said John Dreisaitl knocked him down once in that bat. But see, <laughs> once you know that, then you're you, you're not afraid, but you're watching his release point. And, and if you're watching the pitcher's release point, and if you're watching the pitcher's eyes, he cannot hit you without looking at you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I remember one day with Joaquin Andahar was looking right at me. I said, this guy's going to hit me. <laughs> and I had a bullseye right on my side. He was looking right at me. And I was like, <laughs> and then he acted like it slipped. He, when when I got out of the way, he, he said it slipped. And, you know, I had to tell him a few, you know, <laughs> kind words about, I don't want to hear that slipping because you were looking at me like I had a bullseye on my side. So, you know, it's a, it's a new time, a new day. And, you know, you can talk about old school, new school, but it'll never go back to the old school, I don't think. He's Dusty Baker, the Reds manager. Did you save anything from uh, Hank Aaron, uh, those those uh, days there with the Braves? I mean, he breaks the all-time home run record? Uh, did I save any... Any memorabilia, anything? Uh, not Well, I got a few things. You know, I have like, you know, like I got a Hank Aaron bat and a ball and a picture of Hank and myself and... You know, my former wife, you know, and uh, just, you know, not a whole bunch of stuff. I got a whole bunch of memories. You know, we got some photos, uh, you know, team photos and just, you know, just, uh, you know, quite a few pictures, actually. But back then, nobody really collected memorabilia too much, you know what I mean? But uh, you were in the on-deck circle, though, when he homered. Yeah, right? correct. Yeah. Yeah, I was there. I mean, and I, I loved my days with Hank. That was the best thing you know, that happened to me in my life at that point because I did not want to sign with the Braves because I didn't want to go to the South. This was in 67, 68, and, you know, and there was civil rights movements and anti-Vietnam and uh, being from San Francisco uh, area. You Were know, you scared? Down in Ashbury and Winterland and Golden Gate Park. I, it was a very tumultuous time, anti-everything. and uh, But it happened, ended up being the best thing happened to me, you know, meeting Hank and, uh, you know Andrew Young and Mayor Jackson and some of the great civic leaders of our of our time. And uh, sometimes, you know, you don't realize that that's best for you in your life, uh, especially at that time. So uh, I just talked to him the other day. As a matter of fact, uh, when I was in Atlanta, so that was perhaps you know the best you know some of the best times of my life. What did you do in that at bat after Aaron breaks Babe Ruth's record? Nobody ever. I don't know if anybody ever uh, talks about that. Well, they do sometimes. What I mean, did you do well, in that next at bat? Well, actually, you know, they stopped the game. Yeah. And then it was a cold night. And uh, when Hank hit the home run, he told me he was going to get it over with. He says, man, I'm going to get this over with right now. <laughs> and he had told me this on a number of occasions, and he was always right. I mean, he was doing the Muhammad Ali, just nobody knew it. Wait, know? he called his shot? Yeah, he told me what he was He did that quite often. He was going to take two fastballs. He was teaching me as he was. <laughs> You know what I mean, man? You know, he wasn't, he wasn't boasting. He was, he was actually teaching me, and I didn't know he was teaching me. You know, he'd say, hey, man, I'm going to take this fastball, and then he's going to go slider outside, I'm hitting him over the right center field fence, or I'm going to take these two sliders, and he's going to try to sneak a fastball. This guy knew what was coming all the time. Wow. And, uh, and he studied. And there weren't any scouting reports, there weren't any computer printouts. You, you just remember, you know, from two years ago or five years ago, which I'm trying to get my players to do now because guys ask me now, like, I mean, you know, what's he throw? And I said, you just faced this dude yesterday, you know what I mean? How you don't remember <laughs> what he threw yesterday? So anyway, Hank he hit the home run, and then, you know, I didn't he, I didn't run to the plate or nothing because I didn't want to, you know, take away his moment. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of stayed in the back, and then, um, and, you know, they announced me hitting, and then I heard all this noise, and these seats were clanking, and everybody was going home, you know what I mean? <laughs> 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 I said, wait a minute, I'm about to hit you guys. Everybody was going home. They, they, they saw what they came to see. So, you know, I hit a double next pitch. That's why nobody remembers it. Everybody was going home. You know what I mean? Oh, that's
that's good stuff. Uh, hey, next time I have you on, we'll actually talk about uh, your team. And, you know, you're in second place. But, but thanks for uh, okay. sharing and some of those opinions. And we'll maintain it. And uh, like I tell our guys, Dan, you just want to stay in the rearview mirror. You just don't want to be over the crest of the mountain. <laughs> you stay in the rearview mirror uh, long enough, and, uh, you know, they'll get a little nervous, whoever that you're trying to catch. Hey, good to see you in Chicago. Thank you, Dusty. All right. I'll see you later. All right. Dusty Banker, Reds manager.